So what we're going to show you how to do is an overview of how to do a CMA, but using Moxie Present. And I am sharing, let me make sure I'm, sh I'm sharing the right screen. Okay. We will do a CMA on a house that has expired or canceled. And then if one of you want to go after this, you are welcome to. I uh, Or all of you can. So on the front page of Smart MLS in Market Watch, I have the last seven days. We'll make it today. We'll make it 24 hours. So there are 23 expireds. Let's pull a city that we at least know. I feel like that's a lot. Um, no, it's not that much, but you know, I mean, most things expire at the end of the month. Ooh. So let's see, Hartford, Naugatuck, Plainville, it's a condo, Ranch, Manchester. All right, maybe I'll do that one. Madison. All right, I'm gonna do this one in Madison. I think, let's look at it. Okay, it's a ranch in Madison. Here it is. Let's see where that street is. So here's 79. There's Route 1. So it's below Route 80. So it's not in North Madison. That would be on the other side of Route 80. Uh, it is a little neighborhood here. Let's see if it's in a flood zone. There's. Flood. Oh, it, do it doesn't show us here. All right. So I'm going to click here to see if it's in a flood zone. And it is not. So the X means it's not in a flood zone. But this area has flood zones around it. So that's interesting. All right. Madison's wet. It's a very wet town. Okay. selecting this. So when we're going to do a CMA, there's certain things that we want to know. Number one, I'm going to look at the property history. And it is came on the market as coming soon in July. And then it came active on the 15th. And then in August, they withdrew it. And then it just expired. So they probably changed their mind. That's okay. Uh, once people think of it, you a lot of chance, a lot of times they keep thinking of it. So that is property history. Now we're going to go to public records. Public records. So these are the things we need to know for Moxie uh, Present, which is the CMA. The name of the client. So the name of the client, Alexander and Jerry. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, we also want to know the address, 338. I always forget to write this down. Opening Hill Road. Madison. They bought it for 325 in 2003.
So there's so much good info we can get, guys. Um, we are in the regular MLS in the expired. We are in public records. We want to also know the taxes. Taxes are 6,129. Uh, the living square footage, 1,792. Rooms, eight. Uh, bedrooms, four. And go ahead and write down what I'm telling you to write down so you kind of have notes on what you need to know to do a CMA. Full, two full baths, one half bath. No, two full baths on the main floor, sorry. Two full baths, uh, but there is one half bath. So two and a half baths. And that, it, the main floor is the main floor because it's a ranch, it's all one floor. Forced hot air heat, oil. Built in 1968. Assessed value, total assessed value, 208,400. 200, 2,800. 208,400, sorry. Okay, and that was as of 622. So these taxes are good for 2022. Is it well in septic? Let's see. Well, well, well. All right, I don't see it on here, so I'll look on the listing. Okay, the listing has the same information. Private well and septic. Most of this area is. Okay, one level living, affordable, adorable ranch style home, four bedroom, two and a half bath, central air. Bonus, three season room, currently used as an office, huge basement that could be finished. Wood deck overlooks a private backyard located across the country school, just minutes from 95 in downtown Madison downtown and downtown Guilford. Uh, and then it talks about the beaches. Okay, and that is, and it's being sold as is. Okay. And they have the owner there. Who is the agent? Exclusive right to sell. Oh, Matt Healy. Okay. Yeah, ex uh, dual variable rate commission means if they sell it in-house, the client pays less of a commission. Just so you know. Okay, so we have, what is the garage? Garage. Can you guys see this? Oh, two-car garage. All right, now I'm going to log into 21 online. Okay. And I want you to do it with me so you, if you get stuck, I can help you. Okay. And we are signing in. Uh, what I'm going to show you how to do is just a quick way to do a CMA. It's not a deep dive. That we'll do this afternoon. But I want to show you how you, easy it is if you have a geofarm to give somebody what their house is worth. One more thing I want to write down is the MLS number here. 170. 
506 168 all right so I go up to menu once I'm signed in and then I go to productivity hub that's what we do almost all the time so you guys see that I'm in 21 online I'm on the dashboard upper right hand corner is menu click it go to productivity hub Scroll down to Moxie Present. Okay, and we select Learn More. And then we click Access Moxie Present again. And then you log in and you have your profile. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute. I'm expecting some other people to come in. And I just want to... I can find it. Where is it? Pause recording. So once we're here, we're going into Moxie Present up here and we click Present. If it's ever glitchy, you want to just make sure you're still connected to Century 21. So you'll just go back and it may give you the option to connect. So it's not giving me the option so I know I'm still good. When you're active in the site, it's not going to make you do it. But if you take a few minutes to do something else, come back, it's not working, it's because you're not connected to 21 online. So Moxie is a portal within a portal. And for it to work, it has to be connected to 21 online. Once you're in present, what you're looking at are all the um, CMAs I've done in the past. You won't see all this here. You'll just see one thing that looks kind of lame. Let's see if I have it. I don't have it. Uh, so to start a new presentation, you click create new, blue box, upper right hand corner. So go ahead and do that. Then we are working with the seller. So these are all the different things you can do. So you, there's a lot of fun things you can do with present. Uh, buyer tours, buyer information. Tomorrow we're going to go through a lot of good things about buyers. So you can use this tool for that. But we're going to select seller. And continue. Now we have our company short uh, pages and then we have the brokerage. We're going to go to a brokerage template, the Century 21 LLC parent company. That's where most of the presentations are. And we're looking at the presentation for the listing. So here it is. It's 56 pages and then you have the Spanish version below it. So we're going to select this one and hit continue. Okay. And now I said, remember I said that, you know, we want to know the name of the seller and I copied it onto my, um, I copied it when I was in the MLS so that we have the name of the seller here. So you know what I can do? I'll just get rid of, they both have the same last name. So Alexander P and J Jerry M and then their last name. And we're going to classic. Uh, we also have luxury brand. We're going to do classic and we click create. create. And now it's thinking. So this takes a minute. 
56 pages it's putting in there. Okay, and then it comes up like this. So in our case, we're using a house that was previously listed. If it was listed within the last 10 years, all you need to do is find the MLS number. Okay, here it is. And I'm gonna just copy and paste this into the program. And when you do that and you click copy, and get rid of the space. Um, I'm gonna click copy and then it downloads. If, I di if it hasn't been listed within the last 10 years, then I would just upload an image here. Take a picture either from Google and do a screenshot and save it as a JPEG or take a picture yourself when you're out and about and looking at the house. Good idea is to drive by first before you do this, but you might not have time and you might have to just take a screenshot from Google. Just Google it and when you see the picture, you know, just do the house. So this downloads all the information that ha is the most recent. So we have the year built, taxes, and I'll just check my taxes 6129. So I check I'm making sure this is all updated information. All right. Now, some of the things I'm want going to want to do. So, see the square footage? Um, I'm going to add it to the living square footage. I don't know why, but living square footage is really what you're looking for. And I think it's a misdirection that it shows up in here because this should be like 4,000 something with the basement and the garage, you know. So, I don't know. Then you have the acreage, uh, and it's in acres, so that's good. Year built, tax amount. So I wanna pay attention uh, to the tax amount because we don't have the assessed value. And when I do a CMA, I do use the assessed value when I'm looking at other comparables. Parcel ID, you don't really need the parcel ID, but it's here in the MLS. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add it. All right, there's no maintenance fee, no dues. No pool. Um, parking. So there's two garages. You could probably get like eight cars there. Um, the kitchen. Let's look at the kitchen. Wow, what is that? That is a nice four season porch. So the kitchen is older, probably needs to be updated. So I'm not gonna put anything in about the kitchen. So the house, you know, it's a decent house that just needs some updates. But it looks like it's in moving condition, just would wanna be painted and maybe a new, no, oh, the deck doesn't look that bad. So yeah, that's nice, you can see what it's all about. All right. So back to Moxie Present, and I don't really need to put anything in here. Um, I would say land, private. Um, the floors, I think, were, what, were wood. Uh, fuel, thermopane, windows, oil, and electric. And then it has all that information that was there. And now we have the expired listing number and we are good. So this was only on the market 21 days, but at a time when the prices were at their height, for some reason they withdrew it. So I went next. So now all the houses that, that are similar are downloading. So our top one is the subject property 338 opening hill road and the, it shows four bedrooms three baths 1792 square foot feet the next one is a colonial but it is the same square footage so you know i would rather use ranches if possible or similar to ranches this was was 400,000 okay here's one on magnolia 
three bedrooms, two baths were four, 1868 square feet, more square feet, feet though. And this sold for 530. It was on the market for 497. It sold for 530. So I think I, I might use this. Um, details. When I go to the details, I can see the taxes. Six thousand seven forty one more six thousand one hundred twenty nine. Very similar. So it makes you wonder why did they have their house priced the way it was priced? This house is in perfect condition and it's updated. Okay, and it does have a second floor that is kind of cool. It looks like an amazing mid century house. So probably this is worth more. Well, let me just, maybe I'm going to unselect that. That is a nice house. All right. Here's one Foxwood. 425. Oh, that's in Guilford. We cannot use Guilford, even though it's near. All right, so these are the filters that are on here. Price, nothing is checked. Beds and baths, saying three to five, baths two to four. That's fine. Um... Other filters, square footage. All right, so I, I'm i gonna tell you something. If I'm not seeing what I like, I am going to get rid of the filters because I want ranches if possible. All right, and See if I can find ranch on here. Building style. Ranch. So I'm going to select that and apply. Now there's nothing. Uh, and let me just see beds and baths. I'm going to get rid of that too. I want something close. All right, no ranches. So I'll, I'll tell you what else is on here. Uh, when I go to price, no filters. It also has this. Last six months. I'm going to change this to last 12 months and apply. Now we have some. Nothing close. So remember I said it's below 80. So we don't we want to stay this side of 80. Um, the closer you get to the water, the more the house is worth. Okay, so let's look. We don't want Guilford. Pardee. Nope, that's too low. All right, so I am just not seeing anything similar. Um, Because of um, the style and the kind of house it is, I'm going to go ahead and say okay to the Colonials. Because once you get down here, you can't compare it. It's by the water. So you can't compare it to anything this side of 95. It has to be within this area. And there are no ranches. All right, so now we're going to go to price. I am going to say between. It's I think it's worth more than four hundred thousand. I'm going to say between three seventy five and a max of five twenty five. And um, filters, get rid of ranch. Apply. Okay. Where's our subject property? It's up here. Okay. So let's see what these are. All right. This one's 425. Oh, it's so split. So I'm going to take this one. Let me just look. 
single family. Taxes are less. Okay, and one, three, four, four square feet. We are, what are we guys? What's our square footage? 1792. All right, are you with me? I'm with you. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I think this is good, and I'm going to include this listing. It's a pending too, so that's good. Winter Hill. This came up before. This, the square footage. 1792, this is 197. So a little more, and it's pending too, Winter Hill. Uh, and where is, the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this one too. Four beds, three baths, we have two and a half. Um, let me look. 525, 420. 500. What is this? All right. Nope. I just did that one. That's pending. What is this? So this is dated, and uh, it's like a year ago. Uh, so the, it's probably worth more today because prices have gone up. Um, it, it was sold um, June 30th, I think, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was? Yeah. Where was I? This one? No, it wasn't that one. It, it was looked like a uh, east side, Eastwood, maybe. Yes, Eastwood. Eastwood okay, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and select this one. Include. Oh, it's sold for four seventy one. Oh, it's very similar. All right, that's a good comp. All right, so what do we have so far? We have two pendings. And we need solds. So here's another one on Eastwood. And oh, that I thought I picked it. Okay, this is a sold. Good. Two pendings a sold. We need another sold. Winter Hill, four bedrooms, three baths, nineteen square feet. Let's look at this. Oh, I thought I picked this one. We definitely want that, Winter Hill. Okay, so we have two closed, two pendings. Let's see if there's another one. Cedar. So, so far. The only thing is I need to see these on the map. I'm not looking at the map. This looks similar. And all right, so I now have to see if there's any more. I might get rid of some of these. Madison, just make sure they're in Madison. Three beds to now. Maybe this one. All right, I'm just gonna look and see. So, even though it feels like we're doing this for a long time, we're not doing this for a long time. Drum Road. Three beds, two baths, 14 square feet. The prices are all over the map. And that's one thing we're seeing with the market the way it is, it almost doesn't make sense. That's why you don't want to spend too much time on your CMA. 
one more close. I might do this one. It sold for 45, even though it was on for 345. And that was in August. Okay, so I have my comparables. I'm probably going to not use them all, but I just want to see where they sit on the map. So here's our subject property. Based on what we picked, uh, oh, five comparables, two pendings. And all the solds, the average price is 473. The high is 499. Pending, low, average is 475. All, average is 464. So it could be this house is worth a lot more than they think. I just want to look on a map. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, where did my map go? Hold on. Sort. Distance. Oh, good. I'll sort by distance. So Winter Hill is near. Drum Road. All right. I'm okay. I'm okay with this. And you'll see what it looks like in a minute. And we can go back and make adjustments. And again, this is just quick. I'm, I'm making calls in the morning. I'm going to drive by in the afternoon and drop this off. And just say, I did this without seeing your house. You know, I'm not, I would do a deeper dive, but this may be, you know, just the way, oh, view this listings on map. This is what I wanted. So I'm good with all of this because nothing is below 95. I just didn't want it, you know, every town is different. When you're doing a shoreline area, you have to be very aware of the, boundaries that are in people's minds about that area and uh, you know other otherwise you wouldn't have to pay as much attention so based on the area I am okay with these in fact I'm happy and now we go next continue and then this is the price that comes out and I'm okay with that now I can create a range and I probably would do, what do you think guys? Four fifty. Four fifty. Five twenty five. Too big. Okay. Five hundred. Four ninety nine. I'm going to say 480. Your Fairfield County girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and we hit a play. We could also do like 3% either way. Let's let's see what that would look like. 3%. That would look like 459 to 47. So I'm going to do that 3% either way and apply. Okay, so now I have my range and here is the estimated net proceeds. So the first thing is when I go back to the MLS, my, my session is about to expire. You wanna make sure you stay connected. Back to the MLS and I go into public records I can see the sale price in 2003. Let's see if they refinanced. Mortgage. Oh, they did. 
Oh, only 50,000. Okay, so they have the 234,900 as of 2021, and then they added another 50,000. So they owe, it probably is gonna not be too much less than this. So let me just add that up. And this is where you ask them, Okay, so, because this is a guesstimate, because we're going by what we're looking at here. So, 234.9 plus 50,000. And that's 284.9. So, back to this. Um, we have to say, what do we think it's going to sell for? So, what do you think? And this is where I said you can have more than one price, but we'll say 470. And then, oh, I lost it. What did I say the total was? Let's do it again. 50 plus 234.9. 284.9. Mortgage one. Oh, I can do it that way. Two thirty four nine. Mortgage two fifty thousand. Okay. Listing fee. We're going to keep in three point five. And in this case, we will give out 2.5 apples. We're going to keep in 3.5 apples and give out 2.5 oranges. We can't talk commissions um, because I'm putting this on YouTube. And then we go down to escrow. So we don't have an escrow. Annual property tax, it doesn't matter because it's paid in advance, so they'll get a credit. And uh, I never deal with that. So now we have the conveyance fee. I don't know what the conveyance fee is in Madison. I'm going to see if it comes up if I Google it. Madison, oops. Ah, Madison conveyance tax. Okay. State tax is 0.75. Where is it? It doesn't say. All right, so I don't know what it is. Um, I'm going to, I'll tell you what I do when I don't know. And I put in the max. So the max a town can charge is uh, 0.50. Percent. I'm sure it's not that. It's probably like 0 .30. Um, and then the the oh, the state. Sorry, the state is 0 .5, 0 .75. Unless it's over 800,000, and there there's another calculation that they do. The town or city. I'm going to say 0 .50. That's the most it can be. It's probably 0 .30 or something like that. So it gives us the conveyance fee taxes. And then the only other fee that we have is the attorney fee. And that's probably like a thousand dollars. Okay, so now we have our net. And it is up here at the top. So estimated sale price 470. Estimated seller costs 319. Estimated net proceeds 150. And now we go continue. Okay, and then it goes into all the the brand, um, you know, the CMA first and then the brand information. And we're finished. 
So I'm going to click View, and I'm going to click a View Print Portrait. And this is what the marketing team will print for you. And uh, if you want to, you can email them your listings that you're going to use and they'll create the whole thing for you. But it's really easy to do it yourself. I recommend you do it yourself so you can do the net sheet. I wouldn't trust the marketing assistants to do the net sheet. But once you have it here, they will print it and bind it. You tell them when you need it by and they'll have it at the front desk of the office you want to pick it up at. So here I am in Southington. I would probably request this to be printed in Brantford. And now we'll take a look at it. And here is our beautiful CMA. We're running late, guys. So I'll just, um, I'm going to print this. I'm going to download this up so we can look at it better. And I'm going to email it to you so you have an example. Um, but if you need to go for lunch, we are going, coming back here at 12.30. I'm going to start the next class. Uh, this shows each house like this, and then as you scroll down, you have the subject property first. Then it shows list price, sale price, uh, price per square footage, square footage, so it beds, baths, it has everything. Um, and then we have side by side. So that's side by side comparison. And then we get into the, you know, separated like this, pending properties, and a column view of everything. Then it goes into pricing. So wait a minute, we're missing something. Normally it has a bigger view of the houses. So I don't know what happens. But this is not correct. So we'll, you know what we're going to have to do? Oh, here it is. No, look, that's the net sheet. Oh my God, somebody made some changes here. I'll have to get to the bottom of this, but that is basically how it works. We will fix it. So it will show each house where you can highlight and say, here, here is the one on Watercrest. Have you seen this? And you can have that conversation. So that's it. I'm going to set the alarm for 12.30, and I will see you back then. Great, thanks. Thank you.